From a teacher who embarrasses a spoiled rich brat to a spoiled kid who thinks he literally rules the world, these are the most entitled rich kids of all time. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the story Sultan. Um, that'll be the name we'll be using. And yeah, let's do it. Anyways, so there's a kid in Sultan's class who we are simply going to call the spoiled kid. And this kid was not only a kid who had access to a lot of money, which I mean he did, but just because you have access to a lot of money doesn't necessarily mean that you're like an entitled brat or a spoiled kid or anything like that. You could be genuinely a good person and just happen to have access to a lot of money. You can also be a poor bad person. Like you can be either or. However, way too often when a kid has access to too much money and knows other people don't, he kind of feels this sense of entitlement or she feels a sense of entitlement of like, I earned this even though, you know, as you get older, hopefully you learn that you didn't. So this spoiled kid was one of those kids who would wipe his butt with a hundred dollar bill if he was given the opportunity and then brag to everyone about how he wiped his butt with a hundred dollar bill. Like he was that type of spoiled kid. And he was also just a jerk to everyone who's very entitled. He was very like, I deserve everything because I exist. I exist, therefore, like, I should have. And, like, if, if I don't get what I want, then, like, something is wrong in the world. One of those types of kids. So, anyways, just, like, starting off this story, we're starting it off with a bang. Because it is show and tell. And I don't know if you guys had show and tell. Uh, I had it, like, very briefly in third grade. Some kids had it, like, every single year through even high school, which is pretty crazy. But these kids were in sixth grade, and they still had show and tell. I think the teacher just was like, I don't know what else to do. It's like, I see all my other teachers doing it, even though the teachers were like second grade teachers or whatever. So the kids were a little weirded out by it, but they're like, whatever, we'll do show and tell. And we're starting off with the spoiled kid who walks up to the front of the class to show off his item for show and tell. And like, for example, Sultan brought in one of his like, I don't know, one of his old, uh, like, 1980s vintage, um, like, Superman comics or something. That was one of the things he was super interested in. One kid brought in, like, a football because, like, he was a big football guy, and he was like, I don't really know what else to bring in. Like, it really was this, you brought in something kind of interesting, but you didn't do what the spoiled kid was about to do. So the spoiled kid comes into class, and he, he walks up to the front, and he takes a box. He has this like box in his hand. And it's kind of like a smaller box. It's like a square shaped box. So it's not a rectangular shoe box. It's a square shaped box. He opens it up and inside is this shiny watch. It seems to be like one of those silver plated watches, but it definitely looks very expensive. However, you could have just left it at that. Like the thing that makes it like maybe, here's the thing. If you had a really expensive watch, Maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to bring it in and show it off for, spoil, for show and tell. However, the spoiled kid goes too far. Because when the spoiled kid's up there, he's like, Hey guys, like, uh, for my item of show and tell, I wanted to show you off this watch. I got this watch for my 13th birthday, which, bro, for my 13th birthday, I got a Star Wars action figure. Which was fire, by the way. I was so happy. But this kid's like, yeah, in this watch, I want to I, I wanna play a little game with the class. And everyone in the class, including Salting, were kind of looking at each other like, what does he mean he wants to play a game with the class? Like, what does he even mean by that, bro? Like, lol, uh, okay, what? And he goes on to be like, yeah, so uh, I'm going to take guesses. We're going to play higher or lower. We're going to play higher or lower guessing how much this watch costs. Which, first of all, like... Dude, if you're going to say it, just spit it out. Like, you don't have to drag this out. But also, if you're bringing in something and the whole point of the item is that it costs you a lot of money, like, that's, like, the lamest form of flexing I've ever seen. Like, I don't know. Like, it, 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 like even just wearing it. Like, leave it. Like, everyone knows that this watch is probably expensive. They all know that you're the spoiled kid who gets whatever he wants. And, yeah, the watch is probably expensive, man. So, I don't know. Like, you just don't have to say it. But eventually, like, no one is raising their hands because no one wants to be like, oh... Is it $5,000 just to boost the kid's ego? And he's like, no, more, ha, 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 whatever. No one wants to boost this kid's ego because it's already boosted up to the moon and beyond. So eventually the spoiled kid's like, no guessers? You guys are completely, like, lost or whatever? He, like, mutters under his breath, figures. And he's like, well, let me just say that if you're going to guess anything under $1,000, you're wrong. Just pure silence. It was super cringe and uncomfortable because, like, I know that this kid thought he was, like, the most, the, the coolest, like, wow, this kid is so awesome. I wish I was like him. However, literally no one felt that way after hearing this. They just thought that he was, like, an entitled kid slash spoiled brat. And, yeah, so he goes on to say, well, teacher, do you have any guesses? And the teacher, 
can't just be like, isn't like kicking him off, but obviously isn't super happy with the way this is going. So he's like, no, I, I don't actually. And the spoiled kid's like, fine, I'll tell you, $10,000. And everyone kind of just looks at him. Obviously, that's a ton of money, and especially for a watch, that's a lot of money. But, you know, everyone's kind of just looking at him like, okay, dude, like, do you want a prize? Do you, do you want an award for that? Do you want an award that someone bought you a $10,000 watch? Like, you're not getting my admiration or respect. So do you want, like, I don't know, do you want a trophy that says hard, like, biggest flexor in the school or something? Yeah, so the kid just, like, is like, yep, and that's all I want to say. And he sits down, and yeah, that's, uh... That's just like, and it, it, that's that to start off the story with something like that just shows you a little glimpse of what this kid is like. But when he sits down, he doesn't sit back in the spot he was normally sitting. He sits next to this girl. This girl, we're gonna call Kate because I call like a third of the girls in my stories Kate because it's easier for me to remember because name of my friend back home. Anyways, so Sultan happened to have a crush on this girl, right? And uh, he was not, he saw that like the spoiled kid, instead of sitting back in the seat he was just in, sat next to Kate instead. And uh, he was talking up Kate. And, you know, to give credit where credit is due, the spoiled kid was low key pretty good at flirting. He had, he, he, you know, he was actually cool with it. He was good with it. And I hate to give him credit because like no one wants to give the spoiled and title kid credit, but I got to be fair in these videos. Dude was definitely running it up. And Sultan saw this, right? Sultan said in the ins, because by the way, the story was submitted to me via Instagram. Follow me and then DM me your own stories if you'd like. Sultan admitted to me that he was getting a little jealous. So the spoiled kid is like talking this girl up. And I think that like Kate was like pretty embarrassed for him after the whole, I have an expensive watch. But the thing is, this guy was just being so, I don't know, like he was just, he just had game that was unmatched. And I think she kind of just started to willingly forget what the spoiled kid just did. I think she was like, yeah, this kid isn't too bad looking and also he's pretty like, he's pretty smooth with it. So I'm just gonna forget the fact that he went up there flexing that someone bought him a $10,000 watch and kind of like drew the whole thing out like as long as possible to get the most attention as well as the focus of the presentation was that the watch was expensive. I'm just gonna forget all about that. So yeah, Sultan had to watch for the next 20 minutes. And cause by the way, other people were going up there showing off whatever they had. And uh, everyone else's presentations for show and tell were, were, were pretty normal. Like they were pretty normal people presentations or whatever. However, the spoiled and yeah, no one was showing off. Oh, here's a thousand dollar gold brick. I wipe my butt with. But uh, yeah, the thing is the spoiled kid wasn't showing any attention to these kids' presentations. He was just whispering slash whisper flirting with the girl next to him, which was Kate. Unfortunately, this was Sultan's crush, so the next 20 minutes were super infuriating. Not just because some random guy was flirting with Sultan's crush, which it's always tough. Dude, I've been in that situation a lot where you see someone else and you know that they're doing a good job. And they're basically just saying like, hey man, that's tough for you, but this girl's mine, man. I've been in that situation, it's unfortunate, but it's even worse when that person is the worst. Like, at least if it's a good guy, you're like, dang, I lost out, like I'm taking the L, but at least she's taking a W. The thing is though, Sultan knows that this guy's the worst. So yeah, this was like the most excruciating 20 minutes of Sultan's life. However, things turn around for Sultan because, you know, he's talking with his friends and his friends all know that like he is like a thing for Kate or whatever. And they're all like at the lunch table every day. They're like, did you talk to her, bro? Did you talk to her? Most of the days would be no. And they'd be like, dude, come on. But one of the days he'd be like, yeah, like we had a little conversation. They'd be like, let's go. Let's freaking go. And they'd all like stand up in the lunch table and go like, bum, 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 but like bang their table. It was, it was cool. It was a fun time. They also all knew about it. So when Sultan was explaining what happened, the guys were like, dang, bro, like, that's mad tough. Like, I hate to see that, like, especially with that kid. Because, like, this, even though those guys weren't in the class with Sultan, they just knew that that kid was the worst, just in general. However, when the kids was like, you know, I actually, I like, he's like, wait, I think I have something to say. And he said that, like, word was getting around, like, that everybody, after, like, some girl in the class saw that, like, Kate was talking with uh, the spoiled kid, apparently, like, every single girl and like half the guys in the entire grade went up to Kate because like word gets out really quickly. They go to a pretty small school and also middle school. If a guy talks to a girl or vice versa, then, oh my God, they're dating, bro. Like that, that was a big deal back in the day, which is kind of crazy to look back on. And I'm like, dang, I, <laughs> that's actually how it was back then. But anyways, um, word got out pretty quickly and like literally everybody went up to Kate 
and they were like, dude, this kid's the worst. Don't give him the time of day. I know he's smooth with it, but trust me, he's terrible. And the the nail in the coffin for the spoiled kid is when his ex-girlfriend, sure, they're like in sixth grade, so oh my God, fifth grade girlfriend, that's so serious. But anyways, when his ex-girlfriend goes up to Kate and is like, look, I know you might be thinking I'm just saying this because I want to get back with him, but I guarantee you I will never even talk to that kid again. And she goes on to list all the reasons why their relationship failed and why it was a terrible experience and why she shouldn't be anywhere near that kid because he's like the worst, most entitled, spoiled kid like ever. Yeah, so eventually Kate, just like the next day, Sultan goes into class and the spoiled kid sits right next down to Kate. And before, like, even though the spoiled kid was very, like, uh, smooth with it and he had a lot of game or whatever, at this point, like, you know, Kate, like, the day before, Kate was at least responding with, like, complete sentences. She was, like, responding like a normal person. But today, for some reason, the spoiled kid was very confused because today she came in and she didn't say anything, dude. Like, she was, like, she'd be, like, yep, okay, haha, whatever. Or just flat out ignore stuff sometimes. Like if the spoiled kid made like a joke under his breath, even if that even if that joke was funny, like the day before she would laugh at everything, she'd even like overemphasize like how funny she thought it was, right? But today, she made it look like every joke bombed, bro. She made it look like this kid had a Netflix special that got one star or something, dude. But uh, yeah, um, the spoiled kid was just really confused. However, the spoiled kid apparently really liked Kate. And this was not good for Kate. Because the spoiled kid would start to get a little bit desperate in his attempts. And by a little bit desperate, I mean you were about to see the most uncomfortable and cringe thing I've probably ever... T- okay, maybe not ever told on the story, on the channel. I've told a lot of stories that are pretty cringe. Which, if you guys are bored, feel free to check out the playlist of my stories linked in the pinned comment after this one. But yeah, uh, you're about to hear one of the most uncomfortable things I've told on the story in a second. On the channel in a second, told on the story. Guys, I, don't, I can't even speak English properly. I gotta take some more English classes. But uh, yeah, the spoiled kid gets a little bit desperate for Kate's attention. Let's just put it like that. He gets a little bit desperate. Real quick, if you've made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. That'll be the secret keyword of the day. If you want to farm some hearts on the channel, I will try and hard a bunch of comments to say the secret word down below. And also, if you do want to support the channel, I mentioned this a second ago, but there is a playlist in the pinned comment down below. Uh, if you put that playlist on, it's all my old stories. If you put that playlist on while you're doing something like, I don't know, cleaning your room, playing video games, drawing, trying to go to sleep, Whatever, right? It actually really does support the channel because watch time's really good. And please let me know in the comment section what you were doing while watching my videos. I, I read the comments all the time and I'm genuinely so interested to hear what you guys are doing. And also, I try and hard and respond to those comments because it's my way of saying thank you for supporting, but supporting the channel by watching the videos while doing other stuff. Let's get back to the story as the spoiled kid is about to do something pretty mega cringe. So let's get into it. Yeah. So a couple days later, and this is a couple days of, you know, this oil kid failing to flirt with Kate. At this point, every single day, Sultan, while he's not, flirt- you know, he's not making his moves with Kate, so he can't really be too happy about it. However, he's sitting back, and he's watching this oil kid basically flailing his arms around in a sense, um, by the way that like, by the way that like he's just like trying to talk to her and it's not working. But on Friday, they were supposed to do presentations on countries because this was like i don't know a geography class i think the last time i had a a, like a a a quote-unquote geography class was like legitimately in sixth grade i haven't had geography class since sixth grade but anyways since they're in a geography class they were each given a country to do a presentation on it wasn't that deep like this wasn't worth like a hundred thousand percent of their grade and if they even like coughed in the wrong time they would fail immediately and be kicked out of school and then have to literally live on the streets from that point on it like it wasn't that deep however it still was a presentation that was worth like what a quiz would be worth and you had to do it in front of the entire class i guess though the spoiled kid decided that you know he was just going to take a zero on this presentation because he decided that this presentation was a perfect opportunity, a perfect opportunity to uh, basically try and win Kate back, quote unquote, right? Uh, So he decided to do something very cringe and very uncomfortable because a Sultan goes up there and he has a presentation on 
I don't know, man, uh, Libya, right? And he goes like, oh, the GDP of Libya is whatever. Here are some cultural things I found interesting. Here's like the history of it. Here's the current president, but whatever, right? And he goes down and everyone's doing the exact same thing. And that's when the spoiled kid goes up there. And Sultan Loki thinks that in the presentation, the spoiled kid's gonna like accidentally include an image of the spoiled kid sitting on his bed covered in a pile of money and be like, oops, how did that get there? <laughs> right? But Sultan has no idea, is not prepared for what is about to come, right? He is simply not prepared for what is about to follow. So the spoiled kid goes up there and he starts the presentation. And immediately, everyone realizes that this will not be a normal presentation, and this will not be a normal day in geography class. Because the presentation starts not with a photo of a country, not with the name of the country he was supposed to do Argentina, not with the name Argentina or a photo of Argentina or anything like that, or not even a blank like slide. Like, it's not like he messed up and he added a blank slide. On there says, reasons to date spoiled kid. And by the way, whenever I say spoiled kid, fill in a name in your head. It's as easier for me to say spoiled kid. Yeah, so anyways, he's like, reasons to date spoiled kid. Yeah, the presentation literally says reasons to date spoiled kid. So everyone in the class starts like mumbling to each other. Some people are very shocked. And the teacher... Dude, I don't know why in all these situations the teachers always just let these things run on, but I, the teacher must have, like, not been paying attention, been spacing out, because all the presentations were low-key kind of boring. I mean, it's just like, the GDP of Japan is one... Like, boo, boring, I don't care. And I think the teacher was spacing out because he was not paying... He did not stop this, right? And he's like, reasons to date spoil, kid. And goes to the next slide. It is literally a stock image of dollar dollar bills, bro. It's a stack of money. You And it says under there, you will be financially supported. Literally saying, I will be your sugar daddy, bro. That's legit what this kid was saying. And he was like, like he says, all right. So as you can see in the first slide, and I think this kid was being very careful not to expose himself right away because the teacher would have heard if he's like, reasons to date me. Number one, I'm rich. But he's like, everyone, so as you can see in the first slide, this is true. And everyone's like, bro, what? And Sultan's like, hey, yo, bro, like what is going on right now? Like this is legit crazy. Yeah, and then he goes to the next slide. And it literally says, super... <laughs> Bro, it says super handsome. He announces himself as... His reason number two is that he is self-proclaimed super handsome. And it's a photo of like, okay, I wish he put a photo of handsome Squidward in there, but it was just a photo of himself. I think it would be much funnier if he put a photo of handsome Squidward. That would be much funnier in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it is, just, it's a photo of himself and number two says like super handsome and, uh, Sultan looks over and Kate looks appalled, bro. Like, I think Kate was like kind of just taking everyone else's word before when they were like, you can't date this guy. He's the worst. I think she was kind of a little disappointed, but like trusted, especially when, you know, his ex-girlfriend came up and said, yeah, this guy's the worst that she's like, all right, fine. I think like she just had a look of like, oh, oh. So this is why he sucks. Okay. Okay, that makes sense, actually. This, this right here, this makes sense. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and then he goes on to the next slide, and it's like, has, it's like, we'll pick you up in fat whip. And it's a photo of, like, it's like a photo of, like, his dad's car or whatever. It's like one of those, like, nicer cars. Like, I don't know if it's a full-on, like, Ferrari $3 million crazy car or something like that. But it's like one of those Porsche Mercedes type. It's like one of those cars that could run up for a lot of money, which is kind of dumb at a certain point. Like, if you like nice cars, you like nice cars. But, dude, I kind of feel like at a certain point, you're just burning your cash. But whatever, right? He's like, we'll pick you up in nice whip or whatever. And then the next slide is the worst one. Because the next slide, he's no longer talking about him himself. No, no, no. He is no longer talking about himself. He now says, so, dot, dot, dot. And everyone's like, um, where is this going? It's like, dot, dot, dot. And this is when the teacher starts to pay attention. And he's kind of like, what? Like, what is this presentation? Because he must have been spacing out for the, I'm so rich, I'm so handsome, and I have a nice car part of the presentation. Because he definitely would have stepped in and been like, hey, bro, this doesn't look like Argentina at all. But it just says, so, dot, dot, dot. Kind of like, the next thing's going to be crazy. So <laughs> the teacher's like, is it like a GDP reveal? Is it a 
uh, in, is it a commentary on the internal conflicts in the south, the southern region of the whatever, right? It's like, uh, I don't know what this reveal is going to be. And we click to the next slide. It is the worst thing ever. Because it says, like, Kate, these reasons are great. You should go on a date with me. It's fate. It's like a poem, bro. He asked Kate out via poem. It's great, right? So everyone in class is like, lol. Everyone bursts out laughing. Like, it is not the reaction I bet that the spoiled kid thought. I bet when the spoiled kid was typing this up, in his mind, he was expecting everyone to be like, oh my god, this makes so much sense. You are so rich, handsome, and have an awesome car and a nice watch and are just so hot. So of course Kate would want to go out with you, dude. Oh my god. It was like, I wonder who this guy wants to go out with. He wants to go out with Kate. I'm so jealous. No. And then all the guys would be like, oh, my God. How could Kate say no? He's so rich, handsome, and awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's just say that how it turned out was a little bit different. Everyone was just freaking out. Like, kids were getting out of their seats and running around with, like, you know, the, the hands on their head. You know that gif of, like, the guy who, like, leans back after roasting someone and all the people freak out around them? Just imagine but that, but with the class. Like, even Sultan stood up out of his seat, put his hands on his head, is like, oh, my God, starts walking back. He has a friend in the back of the room who just, like, falls, uh, falls out of his chair laughing. Everyone's like, what the rick bro like what is this dude doing dude and at this point the teacher's like spoiled kid like this has nothing to do with argentina <laughs> and some people in the class are probably thinking dude you just caught on that this doesn't have to do anything with argentina did you not realize that the first three slides were like i'm rich i'm handsome and i have the coolest car ever because yeah that totally has to do something with argentina bro but everyone's freaking out you know Sultan's on the floor laughing he's like slamming his he's like slamming his hand against the desk like oh my god bro like this is and at this point like kate is just like looking at the ground she's like i'm not here here this is not happening <laughs> why why me like i shouldn't have even talked to this kid it makes total sense why everyone was like stay away this kid's a freak he's the worst it makes sense now i should have listened earlier all that stuff like that at this point the teacher realizes what's going on and he's like spoiled kid this has nothing to do with i don't know like the presentation like this is a distraction to the class like you're distracting everyone and you're, like, making weird comments about classmates uh, in regards to the weird poem on stage or on the screen saying, like, oh, can you go out with me, Kate? It's our fate, bro. Like, first of all, he should have been expelled for cringe, but I don't think that's actually a thing you can get expelled for. But if it is, or if it was, he definitely would have been. So you might be thinking that this is, like, the end of the story and that it doesn't get crazier, and you might be thinking... Connor, why did you title this like teacher rages or exposes or embarrasses or whatever spoiled kid? Let me just say that this isn't the end for the teacher ranting on the spoiled kid. The teacher very soon is about to do a massive dunk on the spoiled kid in front of everyone. Probably something that he's been wanting to do for a while, but has has been held back, right? So yeah, um, the spoiled kid is sent to the front office. He gets like a yelling at, he gets yelled at, he gets a zero on the presentation, whatever. Other than that, he doesn't get much more of a punishment. So the spoiled kid, give this a couple days, right? He's no longer sitting next to Kate because he kind of realizes at this point, he kind of did the Hail Mary, which wasn't even a Hail Mary because those at least have a chance, even if it's unlikely. He did the, uh, the good old shotgun to the face maneuver, which doesn't really work that well in battle. It doesn't really destroy the opponents that well. It's a little detrimental to yourself, I've heard. But yeah, this is when he learns the truth, according to him, right? So word gets out because like Sultan sitting at the table and one of his boys comes up and is like, dude, the spoiled kid is super mad at everyone. And, uh, you know, Sultan's like, why did they is he mad because we didn't bow down to him when he showed off his like two billion dollar house or something? And he's like, no, apparently the spoiled kid was like told that like everybody went up to Kate and told her that they shouldn't mess with him. Right. And he's super mad and is like planning to like get his revenge or something. So Sultan's like, what? Like, what does that even mean? And he's like, I don't know. Apparently he's going to like expose everyone or something. So Sultan's like, okay, that's pretty weird. Like, first of all, does this kid actually think that 
us saying, hey, man, be careful is really what made Kate not want to get with him at the end of the day. Like, does he not believe that his his presentation saying that he's super rich, handsome, awesome and drives fast cars and Kate should go out with him, which he delivered via a poem. Do you really think that that didn't have any effect on the fact that him and Kate aren't currently dating at this very second in this universe, in this timeline? Like, do you really think that that is like the reason why? Do you think that that has any effect? And no, no, no. No effect at all. In fact, that probably helped his chances. But the fact that Sultan said bad words about him means that he doesn't have a chance with her anymore. Or at least that was the logic. However, the spoiled kid didn't think that one person, like he didn't think Sultan or one of Sultan's friends individually said, like don't, like told Kate not to get with them. The, the, the spoiled kid thinks that literally everyone in his class is like against him. So he's going to expose quote unquote everybody, which is just kind of ridiculous. But Sultan is kind of excited to see it because he's like, all right, bet, let's see it. So after class or the next day comes around and Sultan walks into class and uh, he sits down and the spoiled kid's late. So he's like, oh. Maybe Spoil could skip in class because he can't handle the fact that Kate's in here and he couldn't secure the bag. But no, the Spoil kid walks in two minutes late to class and the, and the uh, geography teacher's like, Spoil kid, like, you can't be late to class like this. Like, go sit down. Like, it's a distraction when you're late. And the Spoil kid said, says, no, no, no. Today I need your attention. He stands up in front of the class. And the geography teacher's like, what? He's like, no, you, you're sitting down. And the, and the spoiled kid's like, silence! And his, the geography teacher literally goes silent from shock because he would have never expected one of his students to, to yell, silence at him. Like, that's the most ridiculous thing he's ever heard. But he, the spoiled kid goes on to say, it is all your fault. It is your fault. So, sounding like Nico Cotto Avocado for a second. He's like, it's your fault and points to everyone. You guys were bad-mouthing me to Kate saying that I'm not a good guy when all I am is very good, handsome, and rich. The reason why that this girl points to Kate, embarrassing her again, which, bro, that's not chill. Not chill at all. But he's like, the reason why she won't go out with me is because you guys tricked her into thinking that I'm the worst. Everyone's kind of looking at each other. Sultan is, like, trying to hold back his laughter because he's like, bro's digging his own grave. That's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, you know, he's like... You guys are the reason why she doesn't like me. You guys are the reason why we aren't dating right now. And Kate's like literally has her head in her arms. Like, can this kid stop, bro? He's embarrassing not just me, which he is embarrassing me. He's also playing himself with this whole thing, dude. Like, he's got to stop. Someone's got to stop this kid. But uh, yeah, no, and he keeps on going on to be like, yeah, and the, the, the reason why she doesn't like me is you guys. You all told her I suck when I don't. And bro, that's when the history teacher comes in and drops a nuclear bomb. Nuclear bomb. Sorry, I pronounced it wrong. Not nuclear. It's nuclear. My grandmother loves telling me like, nope, wrong. Because I'm always like nuclear. She's like nuclear, which I, I might as well pronounce it correctly. But he goes on, drops a bomb. He stands up and he's like, that's not why she said no, spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid turns around to look at the teacher. It's almost as if in one of those action movies where, like, the bad guy thinks that, like, he's, like, shot down or killed, like, the good guy or whatever. And then the good guy gets back up with, like, a massive machine gun and is like, oh, like, like you thought, like, you killed me or whatever. And then he comes back. Kind of, like, the same energy. Everyone in the class was low-key stunned because they were not expecting the teacher to come with such fire. The teacher goes on to say, the reason why that she's rejecting you is because you're an entitled, spoiled brat who thinks that just because, like, that he can get anything that he wants and he can be a jerk and disrespect anyone. The whole class goes silent, but this isn't your typical silence. This is your, damn, someone just got roasted silence. And just, like, every, everyone's attention, every ounce of their attention was on this teacher because this teacher was just going in bro he was going in he's like every day you come in with some kind of entitled arrogance when we had show and tell you didn't bring something that you cared about you brought something that was expensive just because it was expensive when when you went up there to do your presentation you know when you went up there to do your presentation like and you didn't even do the subject matter that we're covering you just covered yourself because you wanted to ask a girl out and what was the qualities that you per, like portrayed up there you didn't say that you were kind funny or smart you said that you were rich and handsome 
which the first thing is because you're a father and mother, and the second thing is questionable. Boom! God damn! I, I'm starting to, I'm going to have to pull the fire alarm in here, bro, because that was just too, that was too fire. That's too roast, too, too toasted, dude. I'm going to catch on fire just being in proximity of these burns. But yeah, a spoiled kid literally looks so destroyed. And the teacher ends it off by saying, like, might as well sit down now and cut your losses. And instead of trying to fight back, the spoiled kid at this point knew that, yeah, man, he might as well sit down and just try and cut his losses because he was not going to be able to recover from this one. So as soon as class got out, word spread of this like wildfire. Spread like fire even hotter than the burns that were given to the spoiled kid, right? Sultan rushes to his lunch table with his friend, and they're all just like screaming about it. The whole lunchroom is a buzz like this. And if you don't want this to happen to you, leave a like. I'm just kidding. No, you should leave a like. But if you don't want this to happen to you, just be a good person who doesn't let things like money, or maybe if you're just like a good looking kid or whatever, you just got good genetics, you rolled well, or if you got like money, or if you're really smart, or if you're the star lacrosse, hockey, football, whatever player, if you don't let this stuff go to your head and you're a genuine good person, then this stuff will never happen to you. And that's the moral of today's story. Just imagine for a second that you go and see your cousin who you haven't seen in over two years, and it turns out that your cousin is the most spoiled kid on planet Earth. In the entire time that you're there, he's flexing just how expensive his new Yeezy Supreme Hype Beast Bape Brick cinder block is, dude. And you're kind of just sitting there the entire time questioning your life and being like, why? Why? Why do I live just to suffer, bro? Yeah, but anyways, uh, that's the story that we're gonna be, I'm gonna be telling you today, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's just simply jump right into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted this story, Ryan, and Ryan had not seen his little cousin in about two years at this point, and we're gonna call the little cousin, uh, or Ryan's little cousin in the story, Ben. So the thing is, two years ago, they just had a kind of, not a falling out, but like, I know that like Ryan's mom and Ben's mom just didn't really leave on good terms. Um, so like Ryan's mom was always like, they were always like a, a somewhat middle class, normal family. Like they were really, they never like had to struggle that much, but they also never were able to do anything that fun. Like if they were gonna have a vacation, it would be like, I don't know, to like, a, <laughs> their vacations would be like down the street. You go to the hotel there. You're not going to like Fiji or you're, you're going in the, the France or whatever. And the thing is like Ben, Ryan's cousin, would literally have a vacation every two months to like the most exotic place on planet Earth. But that wasn't the reason why they had a falling out. The reason why they had a falling out was that it was actually um, Ben's mom. So Ryan's cousin, Ben, his mom, or I guess Ryan's aunt, 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 dude, I'm not good with family trees. But basically, um, Ben, the spoiled kid, it was his mom. So Ryan's aunt, it was her like wedding and Ben and, or Ryan and his mom showed up and Ryan's like parents couldn't afford like a thousand dollars to give her in like a wedding gift. So they got her something that was like fairly sentimental, right? They were like, I don't know, it was a sentimental gift. But since like, uh, I don't know, like Ben's mom was kind of like everyone else at the, at the wedding was giving her like, oh, here's gold encrusted carrot for you. It restores the most hunger with good saturation. It's great in Minecraft. And they give her like, oh, here's like, I don't know, gold in, encrusted whatever, or just like really expensive stuff. And then, uh, so basically Ben's mom had a very snarky comment to Ryan's mom about like how like it's a cheap gift or something like that. And after that point, they kind of had a falling out. However, two years past that point, Ryan's mom and Ben's mom kind of got on the phone together. And since I think they're sisters, I think that's how it works. Somehow they're like closely related, right? They decided that like, just like they got to get over it. Like, they're family, they're not going to live forever, and that, like, you know, it's just important for them to, like, stick together, and, like, something petty like that is ridiculous. I think both sides apologize for the way that they reacted, which, you know, I do understand, like, some people might be like, why did Ryan's mom, like, apologize? Like, she didn't do anything besides getting a gift for her sister who had a wedding, but at the same time, Ryan's mom did cut them off for two years. So there's not really anyone who is like in the complete clear in that one. But either way, both of them kind of chill out with each other and are on good terms. So Ryan's mom informs Ryan that he is going to go that this like summer, that they're going to go stay a week at, you know, Ben's mom or her sister's house or whatever. And that, you know, that's it's going to be a great time because they have a really good house. 
and they live in a pretty cool neighborhood type place and it's near i don't know it's like on the shore so maybe they're in cape cod or nantucket or one of those places right so there's gonna be a lot of fun things for ryan to do there and ryan kind of looks at his mom and is like yeah, but, like, I know I'm going to have to hang out with Ben. And the thing is, right, ever since Ben was a little kid, he was kind of like a notorious spoiled brat. He was not that fun to hang out with. But, you know, Ryan's mom was like, you know what? Like, you know what, Ryan? Ben was, like, two years ago. Like, I know two years doesn't sound like a long time. But, you know, since he's a younger kid, they mature really quickly. He's probably, you know, he's probably a much better person now. Like, I think that you're not giving him, like, a good opportunity to prove himself. And Ryan's like, you know, all right, like, I'm not going to make a stink about it. Like, obviously, that's very nice of them to invite us up there. So, yeah, like, that's fine. It's all good. So, eventually, the summertime rolls around, and Ryan gets in the car with his mom, and they drive up about two hours to go see, you know, uh, Ryan's little cousin, Ben, and, uh, you know, Ryan's mom's sister. So, you know, they already know. They already know that something's like, this is not your normal house. Because they're driving up, right? They're driving up to go see this guy, to go to Ben's house, or I guess Ryan's mom's sister, but same thing, right? They're going up to the house, and you know it's a different house when you have to, like, enter a driveway just to get to their house, and the driveway to get to their house takes, like, three minutes to drive. And I don't mean, like, a driveway down a street. I mean a driveway to their house. Like, this was, like, a mega mansion, bro. This thing was huge. Yeah, and at this point, like, you know, Ryan kind of turns to his mom and is like, this kid's house is, like, enormous. Like, we haven't even gotten there yet. And Ryan's mom's like, yeah, you do remember, like, you know, my sister's, like, husband is a very successful banker or, I don't know, he invented Apple. He's Steve Jobs' guy. He's back from the dead. I don't know, man. But, yeah, like, you know, they're very successful and, uh, like, I, like, this isn't really surprising. However, Ryan was just, like, admiring the, like, the drive up there because they had, like, crazy, like, uh, plants from all over the country or all over the world, I should say. It was super green and lush and it was beautiful. They eventually get up to the house and, you know, Ryan's mom gets out of the car and, you know, her sister gets out and they kind of embrace each other because I don't think they've seen each other in person ever since they had the falling out over the wedding. So now at this point, you know, Ryan gets out and he sees Ben and Ben's kind of just looking at him, and Ben isn't, like, looking, like, disgusted or anything. He's like, oh, no, how did the pores break through our gate? Mother, shoot him now. He isn't, like, doing anything crazy like that. However, he isn't looking, like, that excited to see him. But then again, he's still, like, a, like a 13-year-old kid. Like, he's still a kid, and Ryan being 16 is significantly older, right? So he can't be like, wow, why isn't this 13-year-old, like, have, showing his best behavior and manners? Like, yeah, it's not great, but the kid was 13, so it doesn't really matter. So Ryan goes up to him. He's like, hey, Ben, it's been a while since I've seen you. And Ben's like, yeah, like, it's been a second. Good to see you again. And Ryan's like, all right, this kid seems nice enough, whatever. And after Ryan's mom and her sister, right, are done, like, embracing for the first time in two years, you know, they're like, oh, like, Ryan's sister, like, uh, Ryan's mom's sister. I'm just going to say Ben's mom from here on out. Ben's mom's like, oh, you guys should come inside, like, bring your stuff in, whatever, right? So they go inside the house. And let me just say, the house has, like, four floors to it it's a crazy epic house they got a massive pool and water slide in the back it's like just an awesome house right so they get in there and the guest floors are on like the fourth floor so ryan's like walking up all the stair like all the floors and he's just like oh my god is this a house or a hotel bro like i swear to god like you could have the entire like city and like, you could have my entire neighborhood live in this house and there'd still be a bedroom left over at this point so they got up to the final floor, they put their stuff in there, and they walk down, and uh, yeah, at this point, you know, Ryan's mom is talking with Ben's mom, because they, you know, look, they had kind of had like two years, like two years at this point of like not speaking to each other, so they had at least two years of catching up to do, right? So at this point, Ryan's mom's like, hey, Ryan, how about you just go catch up with Ben, your little like cousin or whatever? And Ryan kind of gives a look to his mom of like, bro, like, <laughs> dude, like we all know what this kid is like. Because Ryan, while being fine going on this trip, right, wasn't necessarily trying to spend an exorbitant amount of time with his little cousin Ben, because he still had an assumption that he was pretty spoiled. But Ryan's mom kind of gives him a death stare of a do what I say or you will explode at three in the morning, you know, and he's like, okay, fine, whatever. So Ryan walks over and like, or goes over to Ben and Ben's like, yeah, come up here, I'll show you my room. So Ben opens up his door and like, sure enough, his room is like, 
Ben's room is pretty awesome. There's like everything that a kid could ever want. You got on like one desk, you got an Xbox, you got a PC with a massive monitor, and it's like, you know it's an expensive PC, right? You got the Lego Death Star, which was fire. I never like, I had Lego Star Wars a little bit back in the day. I was more of a Star Wars action figure guy than a Lego guy, but even I could admire like a Lego Star Wars, like a Death Star, like I know how crazy those are. Yeah, but anyways, just looking around the room, there's literally everything that, like, a kid could want. And that's when Ron, Ben's like, dude, come over here. So Ron's like, all right, what's up? He walks over, and Ben opens up his closet door. And sure enough, there's, like, a massive shoe rack. So Ben apparently is, like, almost like a hype beast shoe collector. So you already know that this kid is the worst. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. If any of you guys like that stuff... I had a stint where I really, or like a very small period of time where I was like, oh my God, if it has a Supreme logo on it, it's awesome. So like I fell down that trap too, but like I was broke, bro. Like I was a kid, I didn't have any money. So the, like the most hype beast thing I had were Supreme socks. Yeah, I unironically bought those because I was like, oh, I'm going to be cool now. I'm going to get all the ladies. Let me just say that that was not the case. Unfortunately, I really thought that for a second. And also, by the way, I said a couple videos ago, if we got a thousand likes in like a day, that I would tell you guys about the worst, <laughs> the way I asked out my eighth grade girlfriend, which might be literally, it's worse than any story I've ever told on here. I'm not even kidding you. And I'm sticking to my word. I will be doing that because uh, I got a thousand likes in like five hours or something crazy. So thank you again. I'm just going to be doing that a little bit later. I'm going to be doing it when I think the time is right, but I will now be doing it. So you guys have unlocked the cringiest story on planet Earth. Kind of hate you guys for that, but also thank you for the likes. Yeah, but uh, anyways, so, you know, Ben is like, dude, take a look at these. And he pulls up like the supreme off-white fear of God, super sneakers um, with the tags or whatever and the box logo and he just like pulls up this like pair of shoes that are low-key kind of ugly and he's like dude guess how much these are and ryan already knew that this was going to be where things went downhill because the spoiled kid is literally saying just like oh guess how much guess how expensive these shoes are right and you know brian doesn't really want to play that game but he's like whatever he's like i don't know man like 100 bucks because like bro like, Ryan just didn't involve himself anywhere in this world. And at this point, the spoiled kid, a.k.a. Ben, his cousin, starts literally maniacally laughing. Like, the kid is like an anime supervillain, bro. He's just laughing like... He's laughing like he knows something. He's laughing like, I don't know, he has an evil plot. This kid is laughing like he's the Joker in Batman, bro. Like, it's ridiculous. And Ryan's like, uh, what? And Ben's like... These go for $1,200 at retail. And Ryan's like, dude, why would someone pay $1,200 for shoes? And that's when Ben looks down at his shoes and says, I don't know, but why would someone even pay $10 for those stinkers? And he literally points at Ryan's shoes, which are like, dude, they're like Nike shoes. Like, they're very standard, normal shoes, right? I mean, yeah, sure, they're a little bit beat up, and that's, that's for sure, right? However, they're very standard shoes, like... I got some, like, Nike shoes on right now, and yeah, these things are really worn. Like, the bottoms are basically falling off. However, they work, bro. Like, they're solid shoes. They do the job. And kind of Ryan's looking at him like, bro, shoes are shoes, man. Like, as long as they're not doing damage to your feet and, like, you can walk in them properly, what's the point? And Ben's like, what's the point? The point is that they're expensive. <laughs> and Ryan's like, well, I guess we got to agree to disagree about what's important in a shoe. And Ryan's like, what? or Ben's like, wait until you see this. My prize, pre my prize possession. He pulls out like, I don't know, some other shoe. And it just looks ridiculous to uh, Ryan. Because it's like Yeezy Supreme Bape Collaboration Shoe for $25,000 million. And, you know, and Ben's like, oh, and this one, this one, guess how many of your shoes you'd have to, like, sell to get one of these shoes? Like, Ben literally uses the metric of how crappy Ryan's shoes are in his mind in comparison to how epic his shoe is. He's like, how many of your poor person shoes would you have to sell to have one of my expensive shoes? Like, literally being the worst ever. And in Ryan's mind, he's like, look, I knew that this kid was probably going to be a spoiled brat, right? But... Bro, this is a whole new level. 
Like, this is a whole new level of entitled kid, right? Like, this is a whole new... Like, this is, this is like, oh my... This is out of this world, bro. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. Spoiled will be the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart a bunch of comments to say spoiled. So if you're trying to farm some hearts on the channel, make sure to comment spoiled down below and I'll heart as many as I can. And also, if you want to support the channel, the best way you can do so is by watching this video all the way till the end. And then after that, when you guys have the time, if you do want to binge watch the old videos, you can either go to the playlist, which I'll leave in the pinned comment down below, which has all my videos, or just go to whatever YouTube recommends. Please let me know in the comment section if you are watching a bunch of my old videos. It really supports the channel. I'll try and heart and reply to those comments to say thank you. Anyways, let's get back to the story, right? So Ryan's just sitting in the shoe closet with his, uh, with his little cousin. And his little cousin's like, oh, and this hoodie over here goes for $1,200. How much does your hoodie go for? First of all, Ryan wasn't even wearing a hoodie. He was wearing like a Hanes t-shirt, which... I mean, it works, right? Hanes t-shirt, it's a Hanes t-shirt. It does the job, and it looks fine. And, like, at this point, like, Ben is like, dude, show me the tag. Like, show me the label on that. And Ryan's like, dude, it doesn't really have a label. It's like a Hanes t-shirt. And Ben's like, uh, you mean Hanes X Supreme collab? And Ryan's like, no. Uh, Hanes X Bathing Ape collab? Ryan's like, no. Like, Hanes X Hanes collab, bro. Like, no collab there. And Ryan's like, wait, you mean it's a normal, or Ben's like, wait, you mean it's a normal Hanes t-shirt? Dude, is this like joking? Are you, are, dude, are, if you're trying to be funny right now, you are hilarious. I'm just going to let you know. That was very funny. You are like entertaining me more than anyone else my mom has ever paid to entertain me. And <laughs> Ryan's just like, what the frick, dude? Like, what is this kid on? Like, whatever, whatever drug, uh, whatever, uh, substance this I, I can't say these things youtube don't be mad whatever this kid is on bro i'm trying to smoke some of that too <laughs> she, she uh i can't be saying any of this youtube's gonna be big mad at me um but anyways right so eventually he's called down by his mom and they sit down and they have dinner and of course ben's parents have like or ben has a personal chef which by the way if you have any of these things that like that the spoiled kid has that doesn't mean anything bad against you it's like you got you, you look you, you got a lucky hand in life. Like, as long as you don't let that go to your head, you're chilling in my book because, like, you couldn't really control that either way. So I have nothing intrinsically against you. But if you're acting like Ben, then, like, bro, you're kind of asking for it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, so when they're down there, like, the personal chef comes out, and he's cooked up, like, some crazy good meal. Like, this meal is super good. It's like, I don't know, it's like this, uh, just imagine like some kind of really exotic, fancy meal or something. And the thing is, though, it was a little bit out there. Like it was kind of like, it wasn't like a hamburger from McDonald's. It was a little bit more complicated than that. So everyone around the table was like kind of excited for this. Like Ryan and Ryan's mom look at each other like, we haven't had a meal this good since dot 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 oh wait the wedding so it's been like two years since the last time we saw these guys because i don't know ryan's used to like i don't know a chick-fil-a run some i don't know some panda express which you can't complain about but i don't know when you see this stuff in comparison you're like god damn like this is food but the thing is there was one person at the table that was not very happy about it and it was ben and ben was about to pitch the biggest fit ever he was like Garçon, come back here. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I called the, the French chef Garçon, but it seems to be fitting because it's like every like Disney movie has the chef called Garçon, so we're going to call the guy Garçon. So Garçon, the chef, comes back in. He's like, yes. And Ben's like, this is... He takes a bite of it. Mm -hmm. He like doesn't vomit it up, but he like spits it back up into his napkin super like aggressively, like very very clearly trying to make a point that he doesn't like what's being served, which fair, you don't have to like everything. Even if something's like considered a delicacy, that doesn't mean you have to like it, right? That's totally fine. If Ben was to say like respectfully to the chef, like, hey, I appreciate the work you put in here, but at the end of the day, like, I just, I just don't enjoy this type of stuff personally. Like, can you just cook me up some like pasta or something real quick? Like, I apologize, but could you do that? Then that would be totally fine. And I wouldn't have a single thing to say wrong about Ben. 
However, if you're having the chef come over and you, like, puke it up into your napkin, dude, that's like spitting in the face of the chef who spent hours and hours doing this. Like, that's mad disrespectful. So the chef, being paid by them, has to hold his tongue, because I'm sure if this was just a normal guy, he would take a glove and slap him in the, slap him in the face. But yeah, he kind of holds his tongue. He's like, all right, uh, Ben, or whatever, would you like something else then? And Ben's like, obviously, I'm definitely not going to be eating this, dude. So sure enough, the chef takes it away and he like whips him up some. He just like grub hubs McDonald's or something. I don't know, man. Something that Ben would like. And Ryan and his mom kind of look at each other like, uh, what the heck is going on here, bro? Like this kid is crazy. And uh, Ryan's kind of giving his mom a look of like, bro, I told you this kid was spoiled. I told you this kid was spoiled, bro. Like I told you. Yeah, but anyways, um, so the next day comes around. And they're just chilling, and it's, like, kind of a hot day out. So Ryan's mom, or Ryan's sister, a.k.a. Ben's mom, says, Hey, boys, how about you go to the, how about you get changed into your swimming trunks or whatever? You go out in the back. And in all fairness, Ryan was actually, he was actually pretty excited to go out in the back because, like, it did seem pretty awesome. He's not going to lie. Like, it was a whole, I don't know, it was a whole, like, water park back there. So Ryan's not going to lie to you guys and say that he wasn't at least a little bit excited to go back there. So he gets in his trunks and, you know, he goes out. At this point, right, but, you know, Ryan's like, wow, this thing's amazing. Because it wasn't just a big pool. It was like a pool with a slide, but the slide was like terraformed to make it look like, I don't know, it was like a, vault, a mountain and you were sliding down a mountain. And there was like fake palm trees all around. It was like really beautiful and really pretty and really awesome. And Ryan was kind of excited, right? So he was having a good time. And about 30 minutes later, after Ryan was done kind of messing around on everything, both Ben and Ryan sit on like sun chairs or whatever to kind of chill in the sun and dry off. So at this point, Ryan was actually having a really good day and he was like, okay, in his head, he was like, yeah, Ben was kind of a, like a butt yesterday. However, today he seems to be chilling, which is pretty cool. And like, I can respect that, right? And uh, almost as soon as Ryan is done thinking that exact thought, Ben opens his mouth and once again says something pretty out of pocket. So Ben opens his mouth and he says, like, you're welcome for, for me letting you stay at my S awesome house. Which, like, what, bro? Why would you say that? Like, yes, it is implied. Like, it would be a nice if at the end of the trip, Ryan, it would actually be very courteous if Ryan was to say, thank you for letting me stay at your house. But to tell someone, like, I bet you're super thankful that I, I'm letting you stay at my house, bro, that just defeats the whole purpose, bro. Like, obviously, they're thankful. And even if they're not thankful, it would be the polite thing for them to say that. But that's on them to say it. That's not on you to force it out of them. Like, that's just some goofy behavior right there. So, yeah, um, uh, I mean, Ryan kind of just looks at Ben and says, yeah, man, because, I mean, he was. Like, he's having a good time. But he definitely felt it was super weird that Ben was to say that to him. So he's like, yeah, man, like, I, I appreciate it. I do. And that's when Ben goes on to say, like, must be nice to have a break from your, your little tiny hut that you live in somehow. Which was just the most condescending sentence you've ever heard. Like, imagine someone, like, like you're at someone's house and they're like, you're welcome for, like, getting you out of that little hut, that little, that little broom closet, that little Harry Potter under the stairs closet that you call a house, bro. Like, dang, dude. Like, <laughs> the thing is, too, like, Ryan's house wasn't that bad. It, I mean, yeah, it was, like, one story, but he had his own room. There was a kitchen. There was a TV. There was a couch. What else could you want, dude? Like, legitimately, what else could you want? Sure, he didn't have 17 floors, an elevator, a pool, a, 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 a Disneyland in his backyard or whatever. However, you know, he had a good family and he had a bed. He had a roof. He had a kitchen counter or whatever. He was chilling. So he kind of, like, ignores this comment. Ryan kind of, like, laughs a little bit to try and laugh it off because it was kind of an awkward situation. He's not going to lie. But, uh, yeah, the kid actually continues on and is like, Ben's like, how, dude, like, I've been thinking about this recently. How do you actually live in those kind of situations? Like, I've seen some documentaries on TV. It's like, when I, when my parents donate to those, like, organizations, does, like, a little bit of that go to you? <laughs> Which, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan's low-key trying to hold his composure. He's, he's not even mad. He's legit not even mad. He just thinks it's funny. 
it, it, it's just funny. Like, bro, are you serious right now? Like, are you real? The, the, the charities that are helping, you know, people that are in like food insecure or in countries that don't have as good of like a support system, bro, like you're really, you're, you're grouping me in with them? Like, just because I can't go to, like, Fiji every two weeks, dude? Are you serious? So, yeah, Ryan is just kind of looking at him. He kind of laughs it off or whatever. And nothing really else happens for the rest of the day. So, on the third day, the next day, you know, Ryan and Ben's mom decide that they want to go in and they want to go to, like, the whatever center and shop or whatever. And, uh, you know, Ryan and Ben, you know, they had the option of staying in the house which Loki Ryan was like, dude, I don't want to go shopping in some women's stores, bro. I'm not trying to do that. Like, I'm not trying to sit around in the chairs that are meant for the husbands, you know? Like, dude, I'm not trying to do that. Because, you know, Ryan, he brought his computer. Maybe he's trying to watch some Netflix, maybe trying to play some games or something. But obviously, right, Ben is like, wants to go to the Hypebeast store, the, 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 the shoe locker store, and buy all the shoes in there or something. And, you know, Ryan's mom's like, Ryan, since, you know, you don't get to see your little cousin that often, you should come along too. And Ryan, once again, gives a look to his mom like, bro, are you... Are you trying to make me hate myself? Like, are, do you hate me as an individual? Like, what's the word on this, bro? Like, are you trying to set me up right now? But yeah, Ryan has to show up as well, whether he likes it or not. And so Ben and Ryan, you know, they're separated from the parents. The parents are like, all right, we're going to go this way. You go, you boys shop wherever you want. And so Ben is like, all right, follow me, dude. And he brings them to like the hype beast, super expensive, whatever store. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, they get in there and, you know, you know, Ryan's looking around a little bit. He sh sees this one shoe that he thinks is kind of sick. He's like, these are kind of like, this is, these are kind of fire. Like I actually could like pull these off and he picks it up and he looks at the bottom and it's like 60 bucks. He's like, oh, hell not, nah, bro. I'm not trying to drop 60 bucks on this. And Ryan, and like Ben turns around, he's like, are you going to get those? And Ryan is like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't think I am. And Ben's like, why? I think they look good on you. And Ryan wasn't really trying to say, oh, they're 60 bucks. I don't feel like spending that. Because he knew that, like, Ben was definitely going to have an out-of-pocket comment. And sure enough, like, Ryan eventually is kind of pushed into the corner because Ben's like, I think they look good on you. Ryan's not going to lie and say that they wouldn't because they obviously were going to look pretty fire on him. So he ends up saying, like, yeah, I just don't know if I want to drop 60 bucks on it. And Ben comes up with the most out-of-pocket comment you've ever heard. He's like, well, I mean, bro, if you just, like... If you just, like, grinded like I did, if you just worked harder, you would have definitely been able to afford that. And Ryan just turns around. He's like, dude, what? So Ryan's been holding it in pretty well, but at this point, he's like, nah, this is crazy. So sure enough, uh, you, know, you know, Ben keeps on going on like, yeah, I mean... I'm super hardworking, and for that reason, I can literally get anything I ever want, like, at these stores. Like, that's what all this stuff I was showing you, dude, I wasn't just flexing. I was trying to inspire you, which Ryan was like, bro, 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 come on now. You were trying to inspire me by flexing those shoes your parents bought you, and he basically says, like, I don't understand, and, you know, Ben goes on to say, well... Because I'm working so hard, I wanted to show you what the fruits of my labor looked like. And the thing is, right, it's not like, I don't know, Ben had some, like, secret business, some dropshipping business or something, or he ran a chain of lemonade stands or something like that. Bro legitimately just, like, played, like, Call of Duty and, like, collected shoes. He just had credit card access to his parents' card, who really just didn't care how much he spent on it at this point. So, like, Ryan was just like, oh, man, like, that's kind of ridiculous. However... There was one thing that, like, uh, this kid, Ben, dude low-key messed up. Bro low-key messed up, bro. Because here's the thing. Ben's mom and Ryan's, or Ryan's mom and Ben's mom, they were done shopping at whatever, and they wanted to go and get lunch. So they were walking in, and, you know, Ben's mom's like, oh, I know the guys are definitely in that store over there. Because it's, like, the one store that Ben is always wanting to go to. So Ben's mom and Ryan's mom walk in. And they're walking up, and they can't seem to find the kids. However, Ryan and Ben were, like, one aisle behind them. So when Ben starts talking, Ryan's mom and Ben's mom are like, oh, that's where they are. But the thing is, right, they stop, like, Ben's mom at least stops walking over when he hears her son talk, when, he, when she hears her son talking, and Ben's mom hears everything that, Ryan, or that Ben says. 
So after that little conversation, you know, Ben and Ryan are like, or Ryan's like, uh, it's probably getting around lunchtime, so we find the parents. And as soon as he says that, Ben's mom and Ryan's mom, they kind of like burst out from behind the scenes. And they're, and you know, Ryan's like, oh, how long have you guys been here? And Ben's mom literally says long enough. Like Ben's mom was, was not having it right now. She was not happy at all. And like Ryan was kind of confused. He was a little worried that like, I don't know, his mom and, like, Ben's mom got another, like, fight or whatever or just disagreed over something again. So he is kind of like, oh, geez, like, what's going on now? And that's when Ben's mom, instead of being mad at Ryan's mom or Ryan, goes immediately to Ben. And it's just like, like, I, like, I overheard everything you said to Ryan, like, just a second ago. And Ben's like, what, about, like, how I'm trying to inspire him? Because, like, Loki Ben didn't see anything wrong in what he was saying, which at this point... You guys might be blaming Ben, and I totally understand where you're coming from, but at the end of the day, kid is 13. At that age, you're really just molded by your parents at that point. So the fact that Ben was, like, trying to inspire Ryan by flexing and telling him to work harder, bro, was just because that was, like, the... That was just the aura slash energy slash parenting that, like, his parents gave off to him, right? I mean, you're shaped by your parents when you're that young. But Ben's mom was not having it. She was like... I don't understand how you could possibly think that, you know, calling, like, calling out Ryan for not spending that much money on shoes will inspire him. And Ben's like, well, if he worked as hard as me, he'd be able to spend like I do. So I'm just trying to, like, inspire him to work as hard as me. And that's when, like, you know, because here's the thing. Sure, um, Ben's mom was a little bit, like, living on a different planet since she kind of had unlimited money too but she grew up as a sister with uh, ryan's mom and they grew up in a household where money was much tighter so even though ryan's mom or ben's mom right now might have been a little bit delusional at some points and especially you know when she called out ryan's mom for giving her a cheap present that was probably like a little bit of delusion plus wedding day nerves but she still had enough context, enough life experience, and real-world understanding to understand how crazy of a statement that was. So she goes on to, like, berate the spoiled kid, basically saying, like, I don't understand what you mean, work harder. Like, like your dad and I have, like, prob- have mistakenly given you unlimited access to our credit cards. We thought that that would make you, like, a better kid for some reason or just make you happy, but it seems like it's turned you into, like, an ungrateful, spoiled brat. Like, what do you mean that you've been working, like, so hard or whatever? And Ben tries to justify that, like, that one time that he cleaned his room was, like, why he has, like, $100,000 to spend. And Ryan and Ryan's mom, the entire time, are kind of looking at each other, especially after the spoiled kid tries to justify why he can spend $1,000 on shoes every single day was because he cleaned his room once, and that 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 was literally the epitome of grind set, and he's grinding, and that's, like, his hard work. Hard work pays off or whatever, right? And at this point, Ben's mom realizes that she messed up, that this is low-key on her, and that she's got to take a, like, quick, evasive parenting maneuvers to try and fix the situation. So she informs, like, Ben that, you know, the money he'll be spending from this point on will be 100% due to his, like, hard work or anything, and that he will be able to have the opportunity to get money from hard work by jobs around the house that she'll be paying out, and that he no longer has access to their credit cards. Ben immediately, right, and here's the thing. Like, I know for a fact that, like, Ben's mom was going to be like, hey, tie your shoes, here's $25,000, or, oh, go cut the grass for a million dollars. Like, okay, maybe not that extreme, but she was definitely not going to be like, okay, if you work in the yard for nine hours, I'll give you 10 bucks. That's low-key how it normally goes for 99.99% of kids, if their parents are even going to pay them. Like, most parents are like, dude, you have to clean, like, you clean the house, clean the, like, yard, do all this. We're not going to pay you, dude. Like, you're living under our roof. Like, you should be doing it either way. But you know for a fact that, like, Ben's parents were going to give him a ton of money for doing nothing. However, even though that was totally the case, Ben starts having a meltdown in the store because his parents cut him off from his credit card. Or not his credit card, cut him off from their credit card. He's like, that's so unfair. Like, you know that one of my hobbies is collecting expensive shoes. How on earth do you think I'll be able to keep up that hobby? Like, that makes me really different. Don't you care about college applications or something? Which, like, funny that, like, this kid who's 13 is, like, trying to leverage 
him buying expensive shoes is something that would get him into college. Yeah, right, bud. At this point, might as well just like, might as well just say that like you're a spoiled brat on your college application letter at this point. But anyways, he keeps like ranting on and Ben's mom is yelling at him like, like, you can't change my mind. Like, I know I created this monster, but I'm going to fix you too. And he's like, you can fix me by giving me unlimited access back or whatever. And Ben's like, well, I still have the credit card and you're not going to be able to take it back. So after he says that, like, Ben's mom literally calls up, like, the bank or whatever while they're standing there and says, hey, I want you to cancel card number and says whatever, right? And Ben starts, like, crying in the middle of the store, like, mom, no, 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 you can't cancel that, mom, no, please, like, I'm not a spoiled kid, I'll prom I promise I'll show you. He's, like, having a full-on meltdown. Ryan is very, very, very uncomfortably sitting there, just kind of like, oh, my God. Like what am I like what am I supposed to do in this situation, bro? Like I seriously don't even know what's going on. Like what do I do, right? And after about twenty minutes of like Ben crying or freaking out or whatever, they all decide to just go back home at this point. And for the rest of the days, it's actually not a bad time. However, Ben is in the worst mood ever. Like you, he, you come downstairs and you'd be like, "How's it going?" And he'd, say, and he'd be like, "Terrible! I hate everything!" And then storm back upstairs. But other than that, they had really good food and they went to some really cool places. And afterwards, on the car ride back, you know, you know, Ryan's mom was like, "You know, my sister's actually like a really cool person now. I think she was just going through a phase." And Ryan's like, "Well, um, I, I unfortunately, ma'am or mom, I can't say the same for Ben." And Ryan's mom's like, "Yeah." I guess he wasn't as good as I was hoping he would be. And uh, Ryan very jokingly says, hey, mom, do you want to give me unlimited credit card access to your account? And she's like, yeah, that sounds like a great way to raise my child. They both kind of laugh and they drive back home. And uh, moral of the story is just don't be a spoiled kid, bro. That's all I'm trying to say.